Well, I hope you've had a really good week. I know lots of you have been back in school this week. Uh, we've really been thinking about you as that all happens. Um, here we are with part nine um, of the Gladys Aylward story, this extraordinary story of this young woman from North London who gave her heart and her life to God and went out as a missionary uh, to China, travelling out by herself on that train um, out to Yangchen in northern China uh, where Mrs Lawson uh, had set up that inn for muleteers and where at night the men came having eaten they slept on those platforms and they listened to these amazing stories of Jesus and I think it's so important to remember that at the heart of this story this Gladys Aylward story is 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 another much more wonderful story a story that just dwarfs completely Gladys Aylward's story this story of Jesus and this story of Jesus so filled Gladys Aylward's heart that she was willing to give up her life in London and go out on a dangerous journey um, and give her life to be out in China just because that story so filled her heart and I've been praying oh God would you would you so put this story in my own heart and then she learns that language doesn't she and then Mrs Lawson dies and she's alone with no financial support and then the Mandarin comes along doesn't he doesn't he he sort of comes to the rescue um, and he asks her to be the foot inspector and he gives her this job and she goes out into the villages and she said I'd long to go to China but never in my wildest dreams had I imagined I'd be paid to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ as I inspected feet um, and then she settles into that region preaching the gospel and going out uh, to reach the people and she says this was my country now these were my people and she gives up her British citizenship and she becomes a Chinese citizen and then the work among the children begins and do you remember those ones ninepence and less and little bow bow the precious bundle and dusty heap and desperate abandoned children were coming uh, and babies and they were being gathered together by Gladys Aylward and a real orphanage grew up there uh, with many many children and then a work in the prison began do you remember that desperate desperate place um, and they sent her in when there's that riot and they say because you have the living God with you and um, after she's been there the conditions in the prison begin to change and the Christians start to visit and some of them, some of the men become Christians and they first called her our way day, which was her Chinese name, uh, the one who does good, the good one. And then the shadow of the Second World War begins to fall and those uh, missionaries and Christians in that area decide to have a final conference and a thousand of them gather in the spring of 1938 um, and the Holy Spirit is poured out on them in those meetings over those five days. And in that final meeting, do you remember she wakes and Gladys hears that roaring sound and she doesn't know what it is and she runs into the courtyard and she said, instead of an enemy plane, there was a wonderful and amazing sight met my eyes. Hundreds of men and women were praying, some kneeling, some standing. She said it was a Pentecostal outpouring. Uh, that came at that time to the Christians. And then the war begins to intensify uh, between the Japanese and the Chinese um, and bombers are seen overhead um, and they begin to bomb the area of Yangchen and the other region um, and the end of the, the eight happinesses gets bombed but the people are okay but the whole region becomes like a war zone, it becomes dangerous and there are armed bandits. And much of Yang Chen has to be shut down and the governor of the prison is told you need to shut the prison. So he says to Gladys Aylward, I'm going to just kill the men. That's my only option. And she says, no, let's resettle them. So they resettle many of them with the families. And do you remember um, two of them are Christians and she says, I'll pay a ransom for them. I'll take them and we'll look after them. And then there are eight left, some of whom are convicted murderers. And she said, we'll take them all. And all those men went and were settled in the villages among the Christians um, and nothing went wrong. Uh, they all kept to their word. Um, and then the Mandarin arrives and he said, he says to Gladys, the war is intensifying. I've been told I too have got to go, but I wanted to come and say goodbye to you. And I wanted to tell you before I left that I now worship the God that you worship, that your God is now my God. And she said her eyes were full of tears in the midst of all this suffering. My God was still working. And in the spring of 1940, Gladys hears that the Japanese have put a price on her head for a hundred dollar reward for anyone who can let them know where the, the missionary woman is because they think she's spying for the Chinese soldiers. So the leaders of the church gather her, gather together and they say to her, away day, you need to go. 
and she'd written by that time to an orphanage in Xi'an and she'd been told um, it was an, a city out to the west and she'd been told if you bring the children here we have a safe place for them and that night she she prays to God oh God would you show me what to do because she knows that the main routes out of Yang Chen have now closed and if she's going to take the children it's going to have to be up through the mountains and so she opens her Bible and she says would you speak to me and it opens at this verse where it says flee flee into the mountains she wrote that was enough for me I had no more doubts I would leave the next day I went to bed and I slept peacefully so the next day they get up this is a picture of her I think with the boys group altogether there were 94 children on that journey they took bowls and cups and bedding and all their clothes that they could wear uh, and among them were nine pence and less and bow bow who wasn't a baby anymore and dusty heap and they set off on this extraordinary journey. Um, they went through the villages to start with where they were known and they were looked after and then out into the mountains. They only had two days supply of food with them. They sang, didn't they, as they went along, count your blessings, name them one by one. High up above them, there were bombers in the skies, but they never got hit. They slept in caves. They slept in deserted temples. They slept out in the open. But by day seven, do you remember, hunger gripped them. They were so hungry. Uh, they had no food. And then amazingly, they met some Chinese soldiers who had just had their, their rations restocked. And so they shared lots of their food with the children. And then on they went. And they kept asking the question, how much further to the Yellow River? Are we nearly there yet? And then on day 12, that child gets to the top of the mountain range first and he's calling back, I can see it, I can see it. And they come to the top of the range and they look down and there below them is the Yellow River. And, and Gladys Elwood says, we're going to go down there, we're going to wait for the ferry. So they go down and they settle by the river's edge, waiting for the ferry and waiting and waiting, but no ferry comes. And by the end of the second day, that evening, she realises that no boats are coming. She wrote, I was almost in despair. All night I worried and prayed and I prayed and I worried. What she didn't know was that two days before they arrived, that whole area had been declared a militarised zone and all crossings of that Yellow River were forbidden. So the third day dawns, they've been there for two days, two nights, third day, um, and they're increasingly concerned. And then a 13-year-old girl asked that question, you told us that Moses opened up the Red Sea so that the people could cross over. Why can't you part the Yellow River for us? And she said she was a bit annoyed. She said, because I'm not Moses. But the child replied, but God is still God. His power has not diminished. He has as much power now as then. And so she calls the children to pray and she realizes her eyes have been on her own resources and not on God's resources. She prays, oh God, I am finished. I can do nothing more. I'm at the end. It's only you, Lord, now. And then a child starts up that favorite song again, count your blessings and the other children begin to join them and then in the distance this is very amazing a Chinese commander hears a sound and he's thinking what is that sound it sounds like children singing and he gets out his binoculars and he looks out across and to his astonishment he sees this group of children gathered on the river bank and then he makes his way towards them. And one of the little children who sees him first calls out, our way day, a big man is here. And she swings round and to her relief, she realises it's a Chinese soldier. He said, what are you doing here? This is a militarised zone. No one can be here. You'll have to go back. She said, we've come from Yang Chen. We can't go back. We'll die on the way. And he takes pity on them. And he calls across his boat and it takes them three trips to get all the children across and they arrive on the other side. And not far from there, there's a refugee centre and they go there to get their food. But very quickly, a Chinese captain finds her and he says, where have you come from? And she said, we've come from Yang Chen. And he said, you can't have done. That means you would have had to cross the Yellow River. She said, we did cross the Yellow River. He said, then you're under arrest. And he took her to a, to a patrol station with all the children as well and she said but if you arrest me you're going to have to arrest all these children as well and in the end he waves them through let's look at the map they've done two-thirds of their journey now 
They walk for another day and then they reach a place called Mien Chin where they can catch a refugee chain train. There were free refugee trains in that area to rescue people from the Japanese invasion. And the children are very terrified of the train, but they all get on it in the end. And for four days they're on that train and they stop at these refugee centres all the way along and they're getting food. And finally, they, they, they reach... Shan Chao, which isn't Xi'an, and they're told you can't go any further, and they're really desperate. She's there alone uh, with these 94 children, and she must have remembered um, that journey before when she first went out, where God helped her. She couldn't get through, but God helped her through. Um, and a soldier said, Look, you can't get through on the train, but my men will accompany you across the high pass, the only way through across to Xi'an. And so those soldiers accompanied the children on that dangerous journey. She said it was terribly dangerous because there were there were high it was a high mountain and there were drops on either side of it. And they finally reach the other side, but then they're told again there's no trains through. And then Gladys says, No trains. She said the children are they're tired and I'm not feeling well. Um th there must be a train. And they said, Well, actually, there is one train, it's the coal train. They said it stops at dawn. Um, and we're willing to, to, to smuggle you onto that train to lie in the coal dust um, as you as you get, travel this last part. We're willing to help you. Um, and so they get them up onto that train and they travel uh, for quite a distance on that coal train. Her only prayer now is, Lord, help us reach Sian. To her, in her mind, it's become like the celestial city. Um, and the children, as they come off that train, are absolutely filthy uh, from all the coal. And they've got three more days of walking to reach Sian. On the way, they're given food at these refugee stations and also food from the soldiers. And then in the distance, they see these high walls and towers of Sian. And they head towards that city. But there's a final devastating thing that's going to happen the gates are closed and when they arrive in front of the gate she calls up to the gatekeeper and he says no the gates are closed she said you he said you can't come in the city's too full with refugees we've no food here you'll have to go on and she said we can't go on we've been on the road for 27 days now you must let us in but they wouldn't. And the officials nearby felt so sorry for her that they said, look, there's a station here, a railway station near here. Uh, we'll help you get there. And then there's a refugee train that will take you on to Fu Feng, which was the final city, that, a city beyond there where they were told that there was another orphanage, a bit like the one in Siam. And so they set off on that journey. It's a, it's a day's journey on the train. And they finally reach Fu Feng. It's 300 miles from Yang Chen. It's right out west beyond Xi'an. Incredibly, there is a refugee center and an orphanage. There are beds and there is food for the children. They had reached safety at last. The journey had taken them about five weeks. It was a similar journey, length of journey, to the one she had made out from London to Yang Chen originally. Incredibly, not one child was lost to sickness or to the dangers on the way. God had brought them all through. That night they gathered and Gladys read out the first part of Psalm 23 as they gave thanks to God for bringing them there safely. Can you imagine what they must have felt as they read out these words? The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me by quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. And we're going to find out the final part of the story is going to be next week. But at least we know we've got the children safely to the orphanage. Oh God, we worship you. We thank you that you are our shepherd. How wonderful that even though we might walk through a dark valley, uh, we need fear no evil uh, for you are with us. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen.